Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our show, Solutions, and I am your host, Bilal Abdul Kareem, where we are discussing real life problems with real life solutions. And we have our guest for today. He is the director of Bridges Foundation, which is an organization that introduces Islam to non Muslims all over the world. He's also the ex chaplain of the American University at Washington, D.C., and he was also the director of WAMI. WAMI means the World Assembly of Muslim Youth and their office in North and Central America. So I would like for everyone to give a nice salam, even though you're at home, and our studio audience, to our brother in Islam, Fadl Suleiman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome to our show. As you probably know, this is uh, my brother Musa. So, and we are very, very happy to have you here today. I'm honored, Yaqi, to be among you. I would like to open up our discussion by asking you uh, a very simple question. Is it possible, or would you say permissible, um, that a man and a woman, Muslim man and Muslim woman, would have some type of uh, interaction on the telephone? For example, I don't mean in cases of necessity, but just general, like I might call up Musa to see how Musa's doing, and he asks me about me, and we just discuss the football game, or whatever the case is. Is this permissible for men and women to do? I was actually coming to this because also one of the etiquettes of interaction is to avoid suspicious situations. If there is no necessity, then why should I be talking to a woman who is not one of my relatives, close relatives, like my sister, my wife, why should I be talking to her on the phone? This, this here brings up some... But if there's a necessity, if she, a woman wants to ask something, a man wants to ask a scholar woman something, he can do that. But what if they just say, there's no temptation here, he's just my friend. Does no. that make it permissible? No, this doesn't make it permissible. Because whenever there is a necessity, whenever there is a serious topic to talk about, this can be permissible. But whenever there's nothing except that I'm just saying, hello, how are you doing today? How do you feel? So what am I expecting her to, st to tell me that this is not? Yeah, I would, I would say also that even if the woman says he's just a friend, I can almost guarantee you that the man is not thinking the same way, Yes. Uh, whether he admits it or not. And of course, you know, even if she does say that, what does her husband think of that? Or what does her brother think of that? Exactly. Are they going to be happy with that? Exactly. Exactly. This brings us to the issue of the wisdom behind the etiquette of, of interaction. And he said, a very good point here. If she said he's a friend, he can guarantee that the man may not be thinking like that. A lot of these etiquettes of like wearing hijab, women should be wearing hijab yes. in front of men. These are to protect women from some men who may be having some diseases in their hearts, like nifaq, hypocrisy thinking about, you know, illegal sexual intercourse, stuff like that. I remember one of the sisters in the American University, when she first came to Islam, then after like a week, she wore hijab. And I said, subhanAllah, mashallah, sister, mm -hmm. mabruk, you, you know, sometimes it takes a longer time from other women <laughs> who were born Muslims to wear hijab. <laughs> it took you like one week only. <laughs> she said, oh, brother, now I feel free. I said, come on, I'm not buying <laughs> you wear more. You're telling me that you feel more free? I said, yes. You don't know how I used to feel before wearing hijab when some men used to detail me with their eyes. Yes. I used to feel like I want to run and hide. But now I have the remote control in my hand. Yes. I say, this man, I'm not going to show him except my face and my hand. This man, <laughs> he's a relative. I'm not going to show him more. He's a relative. I'm going to show him my hair, my arms. <laughs> this man... 
He's my husband. I'm gonna show him whatever I want, whenever I want. Yes. Okay, now I am in control, and this made a lot of sense to me. Some people say that separating the sexes is a sign of disrespect. For example, it's clear. Some people, they say, we're scholars of the culture, and they feel that separating the sexes is a sign of disrespect to the woman, as if you are saying that you are better than them. What do you, what do you say? And why not to the men? Why do they always think that disgracing women or it's about like making them feel lowly or something? Why not to the men? But we need to acknowledge that we have a problem also, Akhi. Sometimes when we separate men from women completely in a mosque, which was not the case, the mosque of the Prophet Muhammad, we give all part, an unclean part. Why here? This is what we really need to acknowledge that we really have a problem sometimes. Okay? But women are as men. Okay? They have rights and they have also duties. We need to respect them. There were women scholars. I am originally Egyptian. Men should be the leaders of their wives and their daughters. But women can be leaders of their younger brothers. Yes. And uh, those brothers c can be, can, you know, they are not always infants. They can be leaders of their uh, sons. And here, it's not about sex. It's about the ability to lead in no. some situation. My reference is, for example, there's going to be an expedition, whatever it might be. Uh, it may be a military expedition. It may be mm -hmm. an outing or what have you. The women say that we should lead, we should lead over the men. This is an excellent example, actually, because Allah has given the men a certain nature and the woman another nature. We are both equal, but we are not similar. Yes. I have the talents and the abilities of doing some things that women cannot do. And women have the talents and the abilities of doing some things that I cannot do. Some women today, they want to be truck drivers and fighters in the battlefield. Okay, let them do that, but I am not going to be pregnant and I'm not going to breastfeed my baby. <laughs> so it's, it's their own problem. If yeah. they want to do that, let them do that. The problem here is that I acknowledge and we should recognize that there are sometimes some discrimination that we do against women, but it's not always men are doing this discrimination. Women, sometimes they are discriminate against themselves and let me tell you how if i am good in doing something like uh, being good in electronics or working in something that not others can do then i go and i take a box of combs and plastic brushes and i sit in front of a metro station selling them i am oppressing myself saying myself i am oppressing my own self i am doing wrong to my own self so this is really a big problem that women today are many of them, not all of them, alhamdulillah, we have a lot of good sisters, yeah. but some others are only focusing on the mode, uh, the new dresses, and the new colors, and which color should match with another color, and she's doing this to herself. Yeah. Some women, they give the, the privilege to men to use them. Yeah. Like a man had a factory of chewing gum, selling the chewing gum for like a quarter only. Yes. And then he brings up like 100 women half dressed and they keep on jumping and, and dancing in front of the TV screen to promote his cheap chewing gum. Who yes. is oppressing himself here? Yes. The man or the woman? This is what I'm saying now. Women can do a lot. Women are half the world. And we have Arabic uh, proverb that speaks about women. He said that the mother is a school. If you prepare her right, you are preparing a whole strong generation. Yes. And I'm not seeing strong generations coming if those will be their women. What are the consequences of too much free mixing and interaction between the sexes? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praises be to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon his noble prophet Muhammad. Akhi, too much mixing, and as they call it today, dating, is very harmful for women. Because you never see single fathers. 
but you only see single mothers. Some men, they just have something in mind. When they get it, they, they leave the female alone with a baby. They act like they are in love and stuff like that. So it's to protect the women. This, it's not always that worse that uh, there will be some kind of illegal sexual intercourse happening, but also the same thing. When Allah tells us they should not be dealing with each other physically, interacting, or being in private places alone, khulwa, this is also for the benefit of the woman. Because if someone came to ask the hand of my daughter, I want him to marry her because he likes the way she thinks. Sorry, Akhi, but not the way she kisses. So this is also a big problem. When the woman can give everything to the man like that, then he will admire things that he will be bored after marriage of it. And then this is not the wife that he was always dreaming of. So Allah allows us to interact with, in a certain frame. No dating, but if he wants to interact, then he should be having the niya, the intention of marriage. So this is called khutuba or khutbah. But even that has its particular settings exactly. and situation. Exactly. The settings are the etiquettes of men and women interacting. Seriousness means that there is some reason for interacting. We have to go to a break. And I want us to just pause this conversation. Don't move. No need to slide down this time. <laughs> we're going to go to a break, and when we come back, inshallah, we're going to pick this, and I have something special for you, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. We'll be back in just a few short moments, inshallah. Our program solutions. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. And we are back and we are continuing with our guest, Fadl Suleiman, and he is giving us some very good insight on the interaction and etiquettes between men and women in Islam. And we like to continue our discussion with the question, what are the consequences of too much free mixing and interaction between the sexes? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. All praises be to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon his noble prophet Muhammad. He, too much mixing and as they call it today, dating, is very harmful for women. Because you never see single fathers, but you only see single mothers. Some men, they just have something in mind when they get it. They, they leave the female alone with a baby. They act like they are in love and stuff like that. So it's to protect the women. This is not always that worse that uh, there will be some kind of illegal sexual intercourse happening, but also the same thing. When Allah tells us they should not be dealing with each other physically, interacting, or being in private places alone, khulwa, this is also for the benefit of the woman. Because if someone came to ask the hand of my daughter, I want him to marry her because he likes the way she thinks. Sorry, Akhi, but not the way she kisses. So this is also a big problem. When the woman can give everything to the man like that, then he will admire things that he will be bored after marriage of it, and then this is not the wife that he was always dreaming of. So Allah allows us to interact with, in a certain frame. No dating, but if he wants to interact, then he should be having the niya, the intention of marriage. So this is called khutuba or khutbah. But even that has its particular settings exactly. and situations. Exactly. The settings are the etiquettes of men and women interacting. Seriousness means that there is some reason for interacting. We have a problem. I'm sure you're aware of this in America. Some of the young people would say to you, okay, all that's fine. But you know, we're in college. We have the MSA. We hang out together. 
And none of us are going out and, you know, going home with each other. And it's just light, you know. Now, I mean, from my perspective, I say, okay, that's where it starts. You know, first you get used to, you know, you get used to smiling and you get used to talking and you get used to flirting and then suddenly you're alone and suddenly some passion rises up in you and something happens. I mean, how, how do you address those kind of people? Same thing. The, again, brings us back to the etiquettes. Who said that among the etiquettes of interaction is that we can go out and out together in restaurants and stuff like that? We should avoid suspicious situations. Prophet Muhammad said, دع ما يريبك إلى ما لا يريبك. يعني avoid what makes you people suspicious. When uh, Lady Sophia was visiting him, he was in doing etiquette in the masjid, and she talked to him, and then he went to take her home, and on his way, two people met him. So they, يعني, speeded a little bit. So he called them. He said, come here. This is my wife, Sophia. Oh, do you think we are suspicious about you, Prophet Allah? He said, well, the shaitan flows with man with his blood. Mm -hmm. I think what, um, what's generally being referred to here is uh, free mixing, meaning, just as we were discussing it, you know, hanging out, going out, you know, chat on the phone. Now, we have some questions here in the studio audience, but before we get to them, a quick question, if we can. What are the limits for interaction between men and women over the internet? Same thing, Yaqi. We need, there is a frame that should be, we should not be in one chatting room alone chatting together. Same thing, because some things can be يعني, said or mentioned that can rise up some temptations. But what if they say this is for the purpose of Dawa? For the purpose of Dawa, it's true, that's okay. But still, I should not be keeping this private only. There are some other uh, rooms that are public rooms that I can be writing something. The, not only this lady is reading, like hundreds others or tens others are reading. Why should, we, uh, should I be keeping this in private with her? But at the same time, I'm not saying this is haram. Because you cannot say that something is haram unless you have a strong evidence for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at least there are things that we avoid because it opens the door for haram that can come next. If you have a man and a woman in a chat room and they're by them alone, and they're exchanging ideas, and this is on, happening on a consistent basis. Is this considered permissible or The not? Muslim here, the Muslim here, as long as it is a respectable frame and they are changing ideas about Islam, about da'wah, I don't think that he should withdraw if there are nobody in that room. He should try to move to another room and tell the, the girl or the girl should tell the boy that let's move to another public room because we may have some other perspective that enrich him. Or, or strengthen our discussion. But if not, I shouldn't say that he, he should pull out of this, but at the same time, you should be keeping the frame of respect and seriousness. And the Muslim here can really control himself here and can know the situation. So even if it's a general conversation, it's not about Islam, now it turns into a general conversation. General, it depends, Yaqi. If it's a general conversation about something like how you doing? Dating and sex and stuff like that. No, no, I, I I'm against. I'm against. I, I, I don't, I don't even want to go that far. Yeah, it's just about elections. E elections. Uh, uh, how you been? What have you been doing? What's going on? Well, well, here this brings us back again to the etiquette of interaction. What is the other parties has to do with what I have been doing? Yes. I, am I going to tell him I was in the toilet? That I was what I have been doing. <laughs> so why? I don't think this is something, this brings us back again to the etiquettes. If the etiquettes exist, we can interact. If the ex etiquette doesn't exist, here there is something to do. Either I withdraw or I stay. I stay whenever I can see that the, there is a benefit from staying. But if there is no benefit and there is wrong in staying, there is something that evil is existing, happening. I should withdraw as a Muslim. I should withdraw. You okay. know, we also have this principle in Islam of the gray area mm -hmm. versus the yeah. safe area. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, best to stay in the safe area. Best to stay in the safe area. <laughs>
Die now you be booking the you be booking. <laughs> yeah. Leave that which makes you down for that which does not make you down. And we have a question here going to our studio audience. Uh, the brother in the first row. Go ahead, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. My name is Sufyan. I'm from Belgium. In Belgium, 4% of the population is Muslim. However, there are no Muslim schools, and all schools are mixed from kindergarten up to university. How do I educate my children Islamically? This brings me back to uh, what I used to tell the brothers in, and the sisters in the States. Send your children to Muslim schools. There's no Muslim schools. Homeschool them. And this is my own opinion. In the States, there is a facility that people can homeschool their own children. And there is like 2 million students that are homeschooled in the States and they are not Muslims. Because it, it is harmful to send them to public schools and we know very bad incidents that happen to, to these kids later on. Uh, I have a friend, an American brother, who sent his, uh, he said, I'm not going to spend 250 or 300 uh, dollars each, uh, every month uh, to, to send my kids to a private Muslim school. I have free education. And he sent his kids to public school. What happened is that his kid, after one week, told his brother, give me your shoes. This is not what I want him to learn. If this is allowed in Belgium, if it's not, if it's not okay in Belgium to do that, if you cannot do that, then send them to the public schools, but give more religious education in weekends and, and in the evenings to your kids. And here you need to learn how to educate your children. Because some people think that they are educating their children and what they are doing is that they are only giving them negative messages about their own religion. So you need to read a lot and to educate yourself a lot about how to educate my children and protect them from the misconceptions that they can be facing and protect them from the uh, wrong messages that they are taking yes. all day long. Well, okay. but we're out of time. Uh, we will have you to come back again, inshallah. And this is our program, Solutions. The solution to our daily problems, free mixing of the sexes is something that leads to a great deal of hardship and turmoil. And we'd like to thank you for joining us. My name is Bilal Abdul Kareem. Wa jazakum manali kulli khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.